I have completed the DLC, and I have killed almost all of the bosses. Uh, I'm sure I, I think I didn't kill this Blood Fiend. I don't remember killing this guy. So maybe I missed him? I don't know. But other than that, uh, I've pretty much done everything. So I'm going to be basing all of this off of my own personal subjective opinion. Uh, this is going to be what I think. And also it's going to be what I consider the highest quality bosses. Uh, that means the best bosses in a lot of different factors. Things like, uh, for example, uh, the difficulty of the boss, the uh, lore of the boss, the way that the boss fights, everything like that. So Ancient Dragon Man. I'm going to put Ancient Dragon Man as a B. I think he's a cool boss. I think it's a great precursor for what you're about to go into whenever you're getting ready to fight Bale. I think this is a really, really cool boss. You get an awesome weapon that makes you do more damage against dragons. The weapon art for that weapon is really cool. And I think you put all those pieces together and it's a B tier boss, maybe even an A tier boss, but I don't really want to give it that much, okay? The next one, Ancient Dragon Sessax. This is a piece of shit garbage, and I'm going to put it in F. I think this is one of the worst bosses in the entire DLC, and I think it was one of the worst bosses in the base game as well. Let me explain why I think that. I think the hitboxes for the electricity are fucking annoying. Having to fight him in the water is also fucking annoying. And if you want to fight him somewhere else, you're fighting him up against a wall that obscures your vision. And I also think that as a collective, all of the dragons in Elden Ring, minus the obvious, let's go ahead and do it right now before I fucking forget, Bale is an S-tier fight. It's probably the best fight in the entire game. And uh, I'll be honest, it is the best dragon fight that From Software has ever made. And nothing else even comes Comes remotely close. However, why is Bale a good boss fight? Bale is a good boss fight because it doesn't allow you to sit there and hit his feet the entire time without being punished tremendously. The reason why the other base boss fights in Elden Ring are dog shit is because those boss fights are, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, the damage component difference between like hitting the head versus hitting the feet is totally off. And I think that you sh they should have made the Elden Ring bosses take 25% damage rather than 50% damage from defeat. That way it would encourage the player to fight the dragon at its head. Because right now the best way to kill dragons is to just look at their foot the entire fight and then hit their foot and try to read animations based off of that. I think it's bad design and I don't like any of the dragons. And the larger a dragon is, the worse the problem is, which is why Ancient Dragon Sessax is an F, because he's probably one of the biggest dragons in the game. So I think it's a terrible fight. It's ruined by camera angles. It's ruined by artificial difficulty. Not really artificial difficulty, but potentially artificial difficulty created by moving him out of the, uh, the water that creates another problem in itself. So all things considered, I think it's an F tier fight. I think it's a, probably the worst fight in the game. Uh, Black Knight Idrid, uh, this is a guy that you fight inside of one of the castles. I think that all of these bosses, this is a good boss. The reason why I like these bosses is because I think they are, they're, they do a really good job of teaching a player what the fuck the weapon does. So it's like if you see one of these NPCs and you see the weapon like they're using, and it's like, oh my god, that's amazing, uh, then you can just go and immediately use it. So, because you kill them and you get the monsters. They're just normal knights, though. They're not. They have a couple of extra effects, but they are close to normal knights. So, that's why it's a C-tier fight, but it's not down here at the bottom. Uh, Black Knight Garrow, that's the same thing, exactly. Now, the Black Jail Knight. Oh, and I wanted to say, before I do that, Bale, everything about this boss fight is peak. It's at the peak of a mountain. The summon guy is peak. The boss design is peak. The mechanics are peak. Everything about it. It it is it the is it the best fight from software has ever made? Because it, it's between like Gale, Ishin, and I think Bale is on that list. It's a contender. Like if I was going to make an S tier list of all of the best boss fights in every From Software game, Bale would be at that top tier. Now, would he be at the top spot of that top tier? Hard to say. But he would be at the top tier. So, yeah. Black Jail Knight. I'm actually going to give Black Jail Knight a B below Dra Ancient Dragon Man. 
The reason why is because I think that he is the first big reality check of the DLC. A lot of people are coming in with really buffed characters, and this guy hits you one time, and you lose 70% of your health. He's not very hard. Like, I think that how many of you guys killed him in the first try, right? It's not that hard of a fight to do. However, it gives you a... It gives you a frame of reference to respect the new DLC at. So, yeah. I refunded my DLC on him. Yeah, I don't think he's that hard. I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. Movement, easy, but hits super hard. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, he's a reality check. Uh, Chief Bloodhand, I didn't do this one, so I'm just not, I'm actually just not going to put him on the list. I don't think I even did this one. Uh, Commander Gaius. Um, a lot of people don't like this boss because of the hitboxes. I'm going to give that an F. Bad hitboxes are a bad fight. It's that simple. Now, I fought this boss, and because I played the build that I did, I don't even know what he does. So, I have no idea. So, I, I'm taking your word for it. Mm. Sinesa should at least be an E for spectacle. No, I think any boss where the hardest component of the boss is something that the boss isn't doing, but the game is doing, like a camera angle. I, I, I'm gonna be honest, I think it's garbage, right? I think it's fucking garbage. So, yeah, I, I, I hate those fights. I think they're trash. Uh, Count Ymir. I think he is B tier above Ancient Dragon Man, but not A tier. So, this is the highest ranking that I think I can give something. Let me explain why. I think it's a great boss for lore reasons, and it's a great boss for, like, world-building reasons. But is it, it is an extremely easy fight. He only does like two different abilities, and the other NPC that he spawns, uh, the girl that looks like Sauron, uh, is also really not that hard. He had two attacks. Yeah, he is. And so like it's a B tier fight. That's that's my perspective. Lower than Black Jail Knight. Um, I think that the lore behind it and like how you like move the fucking throne away. I think that's really cool. I think that's what takes it to a B tier. But if if it's lower for other people, I can respect that. Um, Curse Blade. Oh, I think this is, yeah, Cur this is the one in the, uh, the, the, I think it's called Bonnie Jail. I remember I did this with, uh, with Emmer, so I remember the actual boss name. I think this is a D-tier fight. The reason why I think this is a D-tier fight is because it is literally an outdoor encounter. Actually, E-tier. It is an outdoor encounter, and the highest form of difficulty on this fight is being able to see what the fuck is going on, which I find to be extremely annoying. So you basically have an existing boss that everybody's already seen before, and it's just sitting there doing nothing? I don't know, guys. I think that kind of sucks. It's the same exact thing. So it's not that big of a deal. Dancer of Rana. Um, you guys get to rank this one because I don't think that I know what even, what even the boss does. What does this boss do? It's a C tier? Okay, that's fine. Um, D tier is fine. Yeah, C for okay, but easy. Yeah, okay. We'll put it right there then. Death Knight version 1. Now, I did Death Knight version 2. I don't even know if I did Death Knight version 1. I think that these boss fights... Very cool. Very cool fights. They're cool. That's it. The fight is cool. So that's the reason why. It has a cool set. So good for both versions. Double Axe is better. That's the one that I fought. Yeah, I did the Double Axe one. It was awesome, man. So yeah. The Death Rite Bird buffed. Uh, this is an E tier fight. It's just a uh, existing fight that they just put in the DLC. Uh, I also think the Death Rite Bird is annoying to fight. I just, I do. I think it's an annoying thing to fight, and uh, it's just obnoxious. I also don't like the way that the fire da deals damage in the fight. I just think it's annoying. And so, yeah. Uh, we know? Yeah, you guys know how I feel about that. Death Rite is F, worst boss in the base game, to be honest. It's probably one of the worst bosses, yeah. It's just an annoying boss. Uh, Demi Human Queen Mar Maraga. I think this is also going to be the lowest E tier, or the highest F tier. These bosses were easy in Limgrave, and they're still easy now. They've been easy the whole time. 
So yeah, it's not that bad. Exactly, it's a joke fight. But there you go. And the only difficulty of it is, um... What do you call it? The only difficulty of this fight is the fact that you have ads that are trying to attack you, which is so stupid. Demi Human Swordmaster Ons, A tier fight. Actual A tier fight, fucking awesome. This is such a cool fight. Yoda, yeah, everybody's calling him Yoda. I love it. The mechanics that he does are really good. I think that he's not super aggressive or anything like that. It's just such a great fight. I really like it a lot. She can shotgun you. Oh, with the. Yeah, that thing? Yeah, I remember that. Demi Human Swordmaster, sick as fuck. Yeah, this is so cool. I like it a lot. Divine Beast Dancing Lion. So now we have the first big decision maker. I refuse to put it in S tier because of the camera problems. I will not put it in S tier. I think it's an A tier fight. Like, I think a lot of us early on, like if you had a good build, like, I killed this guy pretty fast, right? I think a lot of you guys probably killed him pretty fast. It wasn't really that bad. He also wasn't hyper-aggressive. So, like, he was, but it wasn't as bad as some of the other bosses. I one-shot him? Yeah, that's pretty good, man. Yeah, I didn't one-shot him, I'll tell you that. I agree, camera's the only issue. Other than that, you never have to lock on. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, aside from that, I think the boss is very good. Hmm. He has the best boss music in the game. I kind of want to agree with you, to be honest. I think I do. Did you know it's two humans dancing in a costume? Yeah, I saw that that tweet. I did. I saw. I thought that was pretty cool. Falling Star Beast buffed. E to your fight. Uh, it's literally just the same exact boss. Yeah, it, it's just it, it, they just added that into the bit from the base game, right? I mean, it's not really that crazy, right? Uh, there you go. Midra music. I like that. I don't know if I like... I don't know which one I like more, to be honest. It, it's, it's very hard to say. Furnace Golem. I think the Furnace Golems are... I like them. It's crazy to see some people saying F and some people saying A. I think that they were cool. I'm going to give them a C. I think that the mechanics of killing them is stupid. But they're a cool boss, spectacle-wise and visual-wise. And because of that, I want to give them a C. That's what I think is fair. Two attacks and half-hour fight? Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. Reminds me of TBC Fall Reaver, he's just there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that that's like, that's the same thing. Remember like in Pal World, right? Whenever you would start the game and there'd be that big mammoth. And like, that's like, that's your benchmark, right? One day I'm going to kill this bitch. So that's the way I see it. Next, Ghost Flame Dragon. That's my opinion. Dog shit. You hated him? Yes, I think it is a dog shit fight. Absolute trash. It's just another dragon. It's another dragon that's more annoying. Yeah, and especially the second version where it's really, really big. Like, oh yeah, this is really fun to fight something that you can't even tell what it's doing. It's so obnoxious. Nah, they're way better than Furnace Golem. No, I don't think so, because the Ghost Flame Dragons can one-shot you. It, the Furnace Golem doesn't do that much damage, so, like, it's it's got stupid mechanics, but it's probably not going to kill you that much. Whereas the Ghost Flame Dragon has stupid mechanics, and it one-shots you. Golden Hippo. That's what I think. Absolute fucking F to your fight. Literal trash. Literal dog shit. Bad. Garbage. I'm gonna be real. Even in the open world? No, but those aren't golden hippos. The golden hippo has a second phase that the open world hippos don't have. So it's not the same thing. The reason why the golden hippo is really hard is because of its size and the place that you fight it in. I think that's a really shitty form of difficulty. I killed it pretty fast whenever I fought it. It took me a few attempts. It did. But after I figured it out and I knew what to do and I got I constantly got lucky, um, I, I killed it pretty fast. It has a shit hitbox, yeah, just it, and also like the the bite attack. Um let me see if I can show it. 
I will. How many of you guys rolled out of the bite attack, but you, he would teleport you back into it? I had that happen to me. Bad boss. Anyway, it's an F. Great idea, though, by the way. If this boss was had a little bit better hitbox for that one thing, and uh, if that had a little bit better hitbox for that one thing, and it also had uh, a better camera, like a better room to fight him in, it would be a great boss. Which is what I think makes it so disappointing. Worse than Gaius, because at least Gaius had some fun moves. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> Jagged Peak Drake. It's just another, basically, Drake that has one extra move. Because of the one extra move, we'll put him above th these. That don't even have one extra move, but it is just a re-add. Re the Lamenter. I think it's a B-tier fight. Interesting. Experimental. New and different. That's B-tier. Low A? No, I don't think it's a low A. It's definitely not an A, but it, that's that's about it. You can transform into a Lamenter as well? Yeah, sure. Two dragons fighting puts it above Ghost Flame for me. That doesn't put it above, it puts it below. Because it's annoying to fight two mobs at the same time. So yeah, Mesmer the Impaler. A lot of people really like this fight. I'm trying to think, is it an S tier fight? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Um, I'm thinking about it so much AoE. It's not as good as Bale. I think Mesmer is is like... Mesmer is closer to an A than it is to Bale. In my mind. I think the fight is good. It's a good fight. But I, I personally feel that way. S tier boss, unbelievable visuals, very fun to learn. A lot of fights don't do it right. Mesmer's challenging, but you can learn his patterns. Yeah. And I'm thinking about like, yeah, because he is a very, very difficult boss. It's the lowest S. That's my opinion, right? Uh, meter, Mother of Fingers. I think it's maybe like right here. For me, it's so... I think it's A tier for sure. If you put everything into perspective, right? Because whenever you finally fight her, this is the culmination of like the entire storyline or like, you know, like a, a plot line in the entire story of Elden Ring. And you go to these huge areas with the fingers everywhere. You have those monsters. You're doing this quest line. You push this throne back like it's Legend of Zelda. And there's this massive fucking ladder down to the bottom. And then you're fighting her in this crazy fucking altar. It's so cool. I think it's an A-tier fight. I do. Now, some of the boss mechanics for this boss I think are fucking stupid. But um, overall, that's why it's not an S-tier fight. But everything else is the reason why it is an A-tier fight. It's a little over underwhelming for all the lore at hand. I don't really think so. I think the reason why you think it's underwhelming is that by the point that you get to her, you are probably so well geared and experienced that you are prepared to fight her and beat her easily. Didn't even know she could summon. Yeah, I had that happen once. I think the boss just punishes you for going on the sides, which is good. Yeah, I think I made a mistake by going on the sides of her too much, actually. Mm. That's actually a really good point, that very few bosses do punish you by just standing at their sides and exploiting them that way. And she does, which makes it good. Midra, Lord of Frenzied Flame. I think this is an S-tier fight. Do I think that it is better than Mesmer? I liked it more than Mesmer. I'm thinking about it. I think they're about even. Midra is like an old Souls boss, really good all around. Yeah, I think so too. I actually... For me... Like the whole frenzied flame inside of Elden Ring was always a really cool idea. And so like seeing the pinnacle of that in a boss fight was really cool. And to me, it was more cool than Mesmer. And I think the lore behind Midra is also really interesting. Mesmer, like, is also... But, like, I, I kind of like Me uh, Midra more. I, I think that Mesmer probably has a cooler and more interesting attack kit. And I think his... Like, it's probably a little bit more flashy. Whereas Midra is much more of, like, a dance. So... I, I like it. I, I I'd go back and forth about this. Midra should lose points solely about how uh, 
Uh, the way she is with the you know, empty abyssal woods, cut content zone. It's annoying to run through on future playthroughs. No horse, too. That is true. You should be able to get a horse in that area. Uh, that's a very good point. But yeah, other than that, I, I think this is pretty interesting. So yeah, I would give it an S. Putrescent Knight. I think this boss fight kind of sucks, to be honest. I don't really like it that much. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to give it like a... Uh, I think it's a... Mm, uh, I think I like right here. Yeah, fight fucking sucks. Yeah, I, I don't really like it. Like, th this is my opinion, right? Obviously, it's my opinion. But that's what I think. This is the Lies of Peace boss? Yeah, I love the boss. S tier, LMO. Yeah, I, to me, I thought it was like, it's a cool idea. It's just that some of the mechanics for that boss were fucking annoying. I didn't really like it that much. But the, uh, the lore and everything about it might take it up to a B for me. Okay, next is Radon, Consort of Mikola. I'm really trying to think about this and give it the most fair ranking possible. That's what I think. Let me explain why. I think that lore-wise, it was incredibly disappointing to me that the last boss was an old boss that I had already done. I was hoping that it would be Godwin, like a resurrected Godwin or something like that, or maybe some form of Queen Merica, or maybe Mikola himself. Radon is not what I had expected, and I think that it was disappointing for a lot of people. It was definitely disappointing for me. I thought that sucked. I also think that because of how blinding the second phase is, visibility on the fight becomes difficulty, which I think is kind of cheesy. This fight is extremely hard. It is a very, very, very hard fight. But that does not make it a good or a bad fight. FPS killer 2? Yeah. It's hard for the wrong reasons. Yeah, it's like you have to double roll out of every single attack. Um, I, I think that all things considered, it's a C tier fight. The harder attack is the frame rate. First phase is so awesome, but man, the second phase is so dumb. There's just too much going on. And then PC talks about how to revive him for the, from earlier on. I know that's the fact. I know that's why. But I think that it's disappointing. I'm sorry, but I wish that I wish we got to fight Godwin. That was... Because that was the only... Basically, that was the only thing in the first... In, like, the, the entry cinematic... That we didn't get to fight. Godwin's soul is gone. So what? You can just reanimate the corpse... And have it not really be Godwin. You could easily change it around. Yeah, so is Radon. Yeah. Like, you just bring it back. You figure it out away. I mean, I don't know, man. Radon's fuck. And also, by the way, th th there's also a, an option like Slave Knight Gale. Like, you think about, like, compare Radon to Slave Knight Gale. It's not even close. It, it, it's, it's, not even, it's not even remotely close. Like, it's not even in the same universe. Gale clears. And it's like, why does Gale clear? Gale clears because it is the pinnacle and the culmination of all three games lore put together and this is the last boss of it. That is fucking awesome. That's so fucking awesome. Whereas Radon is like, what? Yeah. I think it's a C tier fight. That's my opinion. Lois B, maybe? Um I think I think I'll keep it as a C tier fight. This Radon was the body of Moog even more stupid? Well, it's just, it's stupid in so many ways, right? Let's see here. Is, is base game Radon better than, than DLC? Personally, I think the base game Radon is way better than DLC. Way better. It's not even close. Rayla the Great Red Bear? Um... I think this is like a C tier fight, maybe D tier, because this is basically just a rune bear with, I think, two different abilities. So it's basically just a bear. I'm going to put it here for D tier.
That's my opinion. Think so simplified because of the war also? Yeah, exactly. Base gamer Don made you think about how OP he'd be in his prime. This boss ruined that image for most. Uh yeah, yeah, kind of. Red Bear. Well, here's another good way to look at it. I think this mod is better than the DLC last boss. Hey. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this shit. You're ready. This is fucking crazy. Are you really telling me that the DLC is better than this shit? This is fucking awesome. This is too OP? Yeah, but like visually, this is what I had expected. I think this is way cooler. Especially for being a fucking mod. Imagine if they had tried to do this on their own. Like, if FromSoftware actually did this themselves. This would be crazy. The camera's very good? Yeah, exactly. Average player won't clear it either? Yeah, I think the average player is going to be killing, uh... This is nuts. Yeah, they're not, this might be too hard, bro. It is. Guaranteed it's too hard. All I'm... S I think that's really fucking cool. That is fucking badass. I'm good. Yeah, this, it, it's and like I'm talking about just visually, and you compare that, which is a mod, to the new boss in the DLC, and I I don't think the new boss is that interesting. I don't. I'm, and, and that that's my opinion, right? That is my opinion. This is my tier list. If you think it's a great boss, good for you. I don't think so. Red Bear. I don't even remember what boss this is. It goes into uh, D tier. Um, Renala, uh, S tier fight. In my opinion, it's not even a question. This is probably one of the coolest and best fights in a DLC, in my opinion. I think everything about this fight is really cool. Yeah, this is a peak fight. It's so well designed. Uh, the boss is not massively over-aggressive. It's just a great fight. So, yeah. Pontus vibes? Yeah, I know. Let's be honest. The game looks like shit. Everybody knows it. Uh-uh, bro. The game does not look like shit. It looks way better. The entire War of Adonis' gravity abilities and his pale, uh, pale gas at the end of DLC spraying light shit everywhere. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. It's very aggressive, but you have a shield. I actually beat this boss without a shield before I respect. I think this is a great fight. Uh, I think Ronala Re is like an S tier fight. It's a great, great fight. Uh, Ramina, Saint of the Bud. Um, it's like a B, right? You think it's A? I, I find I find boss fights, I think it's the top B tier or like a lower A tier. 
I think Dancing Beast, uh, Divine Beast, Dancing Lion, 100% is better, right? Like, what do you guys think? Like, I, I think the Dancing Beast by, fight is 100% better, but Romnia is, is second. Dancing Lion's dog shit? Yeah, yeah, but I also... I oh, So this is, like, a personal, like, thing for me. I hate bosses that put status effects on you that do a lot of damage because it's fucking annoying. And so this one gives you Skull at Rot. That's fucking annoying to me. So, uh, overall, I would say it's a B-tier fight. But other than that, it's, it's, it's fine. Like, it's too easy? Yeah, I, I don't know. I played it with a shield. Yeah, I was... I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. So, yeah. Our attacks are very slow. Yeah, but, like, the difficulty of a fight is not really... A fight being really hard does not make it really good to me. Rogdella, the Great Red Bear. I Oh, maybe I, I think I missed one of these bears. I only killed one of them. So I'm going to assume that both of the bears are basically the same. So I'll, I'll just do that there. Yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, Scattered Tree Avatar. Um, what are my opinions on this fight? I think it's like a... It's like a B or an A tier fight. Yeah, I'd say somewhere around there. I think it's like right here. I like the idea of it being three phases. It's cool. I think it's like, I mean, for me, like I... It was so easy. I was RP walking around whenever I was fighting it because of my build. So I don't really think I'm a very good way... I have a, I'm a very good person to judge the, the difficulty of this fight. However, um... You know, it was an interesting fight. I liked it. I thought it was good. The fight's hard. S tier. I didn't fight it too early on, though. Yeah, by the time I, I fought it right before I fought the last boss. So, yeah. And so, why is the NPC gank fight not on the list? That's a good question. Uh, the Tree Sentinel 2x buffed uh, just down here. Uh, Rakasha, obviously, it's just, just the same mobs that were already in the game. Uh, Rakasha, I would say Rakasha is, like, right here... Mm, probably like right, right here, I, I'd say. Maybe right here, one or the other. It's a cool fight, definitely, and you get a cool set of armor with a weapon. So yeah, all, all things considered, yeah, something like that. Fuck Rakasha, piece of shit boss. Nah, no way above Radon. I think that I'm power ranking a lot of these based off of also, like, Radon lost a lot of points for, de for being disappointing. That's my opinion. I, I thought I thought it lost a lot of points for just straight up being disappointing. And Jory, Elder Inquisitor. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I think it's a C tier fight. You guys think F? Okay. Fine. I'm gonna put it down at D tier. Ads or F? I think that. He summons so many ads, and it's so overwhelming that it's not fun to do. That's really the way that I feel about it. He spams so much shit. Yeah, it's just fucking annoying. It's like, that's one of the bosses that, like, makes me think, oh, man. Like, like the, the DLC is like, it's not that it's too hard. It's that, like, the bosses are so aggro that it's stressful to learn because of how fast everything is happening. And, like, how it's just, like, it just never fucking stops. So yeah, it's really, really annoying. The chain backstab, the teleport explosion, summoning the big ads, having to attack him from behind. Uh, it's just really fucking annoying too. Yeah, he barely, yeah, he doesn't even stagger hardly. Like, how do you, how do you not stagger and you're like a fucking mage? Like, what is this? So yeah, I think that it's a D tier fight. Now, I'm not going to give it, I'll actually put it, I'll put it like right here. I, I, it's, a, it's a D tier fight. Like, I don't know where it is in D tier, but it's somewhere around there. Radon rank C is crazy, not gonna lie. He should be lucky it's that high. I almost made it even lower than that. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it, it was even lower than that, man. Like, cause it's like, why would I really give a shit about this and, uh, and care? Uh, why is he below Lamenter? Because I thought Lamenter was an interesting and fun boss, whereas I thought Jory was not a fun boss. And Lamenter didn't disappoint me in the same way that Radon did. I also don't think that this list is like 100% objective. This is based off of my experiences. 
Radon and gameplay is S tier wise, but it was really depressing. It was the final boss. Yeah, and I think a lot of people didn't like how, like in the second phase, everything like was really hard to see. And for me, that's what I don't like either. Barely approved. Yeah, Bale, like I think Bale is the best fight. Bale is the best dragon fight that From Software has ever made. Mesmer or Midra or Relina, I think that all three of these, I'm going to be honest, are about on the same level to me. Of quality, I think they are all about on the same level. The reason why Mesmer, I don't like Mesmer quite as much, is that I think that he's too aggro. And I also think that too many of his attack combos, I think that one of his attack combos input reads whether you attack him or not inside of his combo. And I think that's really cheesy. And also, like, a lot of the mobs, a lot of the attacks that the mobs do, or, like, the, the snakes do, I think are annoying, too. I was stabbing her, I killed Bale, and it was over. What a fucking insane fight. Yeah, exactly. I found Mesmer easy. Well, I didn't. Um, I, 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 didn't I didn't like it that much. That's my opinion. He definitely doesn't. He's just fast. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. But uh, Midra felt fun to learn. Yeah, I, I didn't have as much fun learning Mesmer as I did about learning Rel Relina or Midra. So, it's again, like, my experience doing the fight. And I'm going to be honest, I think this is pretty fair. All things considered, this is my list. Bale is the best fight. Mesmer, Midra, and Relina are all also S-tier fights. Uh, the Mother of Fingers meter is probably an A-tier, the best A-tier fight. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Midra fight was really satisfying. Yeah, exactly. And also, like, being able to go underneath some of his attacks. And that felt pretty good, too. So, cheese is bad, in your opinion? Um, I think that... So, this is... A, that's a very interesting question. I think that cheese is bad when that cheese is... It feels artificial. That's the reason why. It, it feels like this is, like, an artificial form of difficulty... And that's why I don't like it. Cheese one of it's a solo game. It cares about cheesing. Well, I'm talking about the boss feels cheesy. Like, for example, um, a lot of Lies of P bosses, I didn't like them because it felt more like I was fighting against the developer rather than the boss. Because it felt like the bosses were designed to do something and confuse you rather than actually just having, like, a normal attack pattern. And I felt that that form of difficulty was annoying. I didn't like it. That's all there is to it. I think it's fucking annoying. Divine Beast Dancing Lion 2 isn't on the list. Yeah, that's because this doesn't go all the way down to Z, so I couldn't rate it properly. But yeah. Gaius needs his own tier below F tier. Yeah, I just really don't know. But that's my tier list for all the bosses in the DLC. There it is.